316, 316. Let's hear from Abraham in Fairfield in Sydney. Hi, Abraham. Welcome. Hi, Neil. How are you? Very well. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are, Neil and Elizabeth, I'm a proud Assyrian myself. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the it's things we the things we're saying here obviously strike a chord with you, Abraham. Very much so. Um, put it this way: all the things that Elizabeth has have said is true. It's a hundred percent true. Um, I just want to add one story which affected our family. There is that my ancestors, which were my grandparents had a large farm in, in, in Mosul itself. And yeah, we've got to be so grateful living in this wonderful country of Australia. Like we, they say that we have freedom of speech. We can say our thoughts. But over there, you, you cannot say anything against anyone, especially in the Saddam region. Like, for example, what actually happened is somebody asked my uncle, he was a taxi driver, and he asked, well, well what do you think of Saddam? And you got to be careful what you say. And unfortunately, my uncle said the wrong thing. Next day, he got a knock on the door and they just assassinated him straight away in front of his family. So you can understand how it touches the chord with myself and, and family and what so. But, you know, it's hard, it's difficult. And what Elizabeth said about being humble and, and stuff like that, when you do speak with an Assyrian family or sit down with them, that's all you get. You get sorrow from them. You look in their eyes and you can feel, feel their frustration in their hearts, just like I am now speaking. Uh, Abraham, uh, let's get a, a thought or two here. Elizabeth, what are your thoughts for Abraham? Oh, yes, and, and, and you see the sadness. You see the sadness. It, it, you, there's not, it's not even... It's beyond, you know, the fear, fear of um, Islamists, fear of what's happening. It's the sadness that thousands of years of Assyrian heritage in their homeland, where they are the indigenous people, uh, is all just, it's all just uh, at risk now. But I keep, I keep clinging and I'm sure you do too Abraham I'm sure you do about that beautiful verse the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 19 where there's a prophecy concerning Egypt Assyria and Israel and God says that God says blessed be each he said this he says the Lord Almighty will bless them saying blessed be Egypt my people Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. That's Isaiah 19, verse 25. And, you know, in the day when this was written by Isaiah, Israel was this little vulnerable country in the middle of these two superpowers, uh, Assyria, the, ri the strong superpower, and Egypt, the rising power. Today, when we look at it, we have a Muslim country, Egypt, a Christian people, Assyria, and a Jewish country, Israel. And the promise still holds. And what I really love about the promise to Assyria there is that it's the work of my hands. Politicians are not going to achieve this. Politicians will not give the Assyrians their homeland. They're hopeless, the politicians. And we do not put our trust in princes. It's hopeless. God will do it. God has promised it. And Assyria will be the work of his hands. And this is what the church must pray for. The, the promise is there. We do not sit back and expect governments or the United Nations, or heaven forbid, to do it. Assyria will be the work of God's hands. He will do it. And we must pray for it. And until it happens, we must help the Assyrians survive. Abraham in Fairfield in Sydney, thank you so much for uh, making your contribution to our conversation today. Uh, time has run out. Uh, the encouragement, of course, is for listeners to these sorts of uh, issues that we're raising today to be prayerful about them. 
And when it comes to things that are happening on the other side of the world, sometimes we're less inclined or more general in our prayers. But you can certainly get some more insight, some more detail and some more depth when you visit Elizabeth's website, elizabethkendall.com. You can sign up there for the Religious Liberty Prayer Bulletin. And uh, But when we're playing with fire, uh, when we're dealing with all sorts of religious turmoil, and the flashpoints that can so easily overtake uh, different nations. Uh, These sorts of things demand uh, for us to be prayerful about what's happening there and as we've drawn attention to, to what's happening here.